All right, so let's talk about hexadecimal numbers and how they work. So we talked about binary. Binary is a zero or a one. That's all there is, is zero or a one. Well, hexadecimal numbers allow us to shorthand writing binary numbers. So what they did was they took a commonality of all numbers in computers. If you think about it, we have a byte. A byte is eight bits. We had a nibble that was four bits. Um, we have we go up from eight bits. We talk about thirty-two bit systems or sixty-four bit systems. We talk about one hundred twenty-eight megs, two hundred fifty-six, five hundred, and I forgot my number there. Uh, but everything there, every number used on computers is divisible by four. It's got that common thing of four. So what they did was they took those nibbles and they took all the possible combinations of four bits. That's where the nibble comes in. And there are 16 possible combinations. And you see those here. These are the 16 possible combinations of four bits. And they said, let's come up with a numbering system where each of these four bit sections, we give it a specific number and we're gonna write out 16 numbers. So the way they did that was they created a hexadecimal number. So a hexadecimal number is a number that starts, that goes from zero all the way to F. And what that means is they go zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And they said, hey, we're out of digits. And they take it, and the last ones, they just add letters, A, B, C, D, E, and F. So what it gives you is a possibility of the number 0 through 9 plus A through F, or 16 total values. So we can shorthand a really big number. So um, we're going to talk in a bit about what's called MAC addresses. And I'm going to kind of give you kind of the way that works. So a MAC address is something assigned to a computer or a device. And I'm going to show you my MAC addresses, and there are several on this computer. Um, just And it's all those things that transmit and receive have a MAC address. Well, that MAC address is written in hexadecimal numbers. And that number looks much like this. It is a total of 12 numbers. 1, 4, B, 3, 1, F. 292620. That's a total of 12 numbers if we talk hexadecimally. We've got one and four, then B, which we know over here, that's actually the number 11 if we were running it. So 9, 10, 11. We've got one F, and F is actually the number, if we go 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, F is 15. So this was like writing 115, but in shorthand so that we could write in that. So here's my question. What's the binary equivalent of this, this MAC address? So let's say that yeah, I don't like this hexadecimal stuff. I'd rather go with something simpler I understand like binary, zeros and ones. Well, so if I was to break this address down, I'd go one. Well, one equals zero, zero, one, or zero 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 one and then four well four equals whoops four equals zero one zero zero so here i go zero one zero zero now i've got the first one i'm going to put a space in here just as a counter then i'd go to b so b over here is one zero one one so one zero one one and then i've got three and three is zero, zero, one, one. So when I was all done, I'd have this big, long number. So this hexadecimal number, that's actually a MAC address. We'll talk about that in just a moment. Um, actually, it's in your thing, but a machine address code uh, has to every, uh, every computer out there. This access code is what they use to identify. So there it is written hexadecimally, which if you had to memorize that or write that down, it'd get very tiresome. So what they did was come up with a fancy way for binary. Now, the other thing I wanna show you uh, on this one, and we're, we're looking at physical networking, is I wanna talk to you about how to find MAC addresses on your computer. 
So this assumes that you're working on uh, a Windows system. If you're not working on a Windows system, then in a moment I'll give you the other command. So you've got to go to your command prompt. To do that, get rid of this little thing, to do go into the command prompt and get there, the easiest way to pull up the command prompt is go down to the bottom where you've got your little search bar and type command prompt. Usually somewhere around when you get the word command, it'll pop up and says, oh, look, there's my best match command prompt. I'll open that. So I get a command prompt. It's a little window. Kind of hard to see in my black. But it has this. This says users in Red Bull. This is my at my name here as my house on my home computer. I'm Red Bull Froggy. So now once I get here, I'm going to type the phrase IP con, whoops, not com, config. I'm going to put a space. I'm going to put a backslash or a slash and all. If you're on an Apple system or Linux system, it's going to be IF space config. And that'll bring this up. Once I do that, I get a really long listing. Every, every device that's on my computer that transmits out, meaning tries to connect to other computers or other things, has a little um, configuration status window. But I don't really care about all this stuff. I don't really care about this. What I do care about is my MAC address. And that address, that machine access code, is right there. It is that 12-digit number that breaks out. And we can take it all the way to that bits. So um, the next thing I want to show you with that number. So I've got a number here that says 14B31F. And I'm going to actually copy this so I highlighted it and from command prompt you can still cut and paste here control C works I'm going to control C this number and really all I want is the first six characters I don't want everything just the first six there so I control C it and I'm going to go to another website it is inside of your classroom and this is a Mac address lookup site so every machine out there has an access code but every manufacturer is assigned that first six digits to them. The last six digits they can use any way they want. But those first six digits are assigned by who made it up. So I'm going to type in there. Whoops, if I can get click in there. Whoa, I went wrong. Come on. Oh, I'm in the wrong one. That makes me an idiot. So down here, I can type in that address. And when I hit it, you'll see that it says that 14B31F belongs to Dell Incorporated, which I happen to be on a Dell. I can't believe I got sucked into the click box that easy. I get so excited doing this. So, well, well, you got to watch me get sucked into the click box. Hope it didn't suck. So I can go through every one of my Mac addresses on my computer. I can go through each of these. Like I've got another one down here. Now up here it says description, Microsoft Wi-Fi. Let's find out. I copy that first six characters. I go back to my page. I paste in that first six characters. And it says right there that belongs to Intel. So these six digits are assigned as MAC addresses for all of Intel's products. And Intel actually has a bunch of them. Um, but there are some other sites out there where you can look up the Intel corporate corporation and see how many MAC addresses they actually have assigned to them, which is a huge amount. Uh, and there's every company out there. So if you decided tomorrow that you wanted to make routers or you wanted to make Wi-Fi things, you'd have to get a MAC address and you'd assign that address to every device you had. So that MAC address is only useful basically in-house for your computers. So everything in your house usually connects. You guys know it as a Wi-Fi router. Everything connects through it. Well, in your house, if those machines were to talk to each other, they just use MAC addresses. Uh, what it comes really important is if you work like in a building like I did on base where I have, there's a thousand computers in the building. All those computers contact each other using that MAC address. Now, outside of it, they use something else. So I hope this helped a little bit with... Um, with hexadecimal numbers.
which are just fancy ways to write numbers and to help you find your MAC address and to actually get that. Bye.